Yeah, if yours are, I'm gonna tear this little thing here down. This is a Bluetooth hands-free set. Charges via USB. There's a head, uh, headphone. Uh, microphone there, that just sits over here. You got your volume, your power. There's a light in there which lights up, but it's, um, it's gone flat. Let's open it up and see what it's like inside. Oh, it's beginning to tear down. I've already torn this down before. Let's clip the side, just clip off. I think this is just stuck down with a bit of uh, double sided tape. There you go. And there's a the guts in there. There's a little LED in there. Power indicator LED. Tells you when it's on and what it's doing. I think it goes red when it's charging and blue when it's uh, active. This tiny little chip here, it's a ISSC. It's a transmitter. That's the Bluetooth transmitter chip there. It's got a picture of an antenna or a tower of microwaves coming out of it. I came away to zoom into it very well. Make that out. Bit hard to see. I'll try and read what's on it. It's got 15163TM-102 DOM 071-00 Under that it's got 100-1703 Yeah, that's the actual Bluetooth sender there. Oops. Now the, the antenna is somewhere there, a little quartz crystal in there. So I'm going to try and pop this open more. Um, I like a little lithium polymer battery there. There we are. There's the other side of this PCB. TX and RX, transmit and receive test points. Quartz crystal. Speaker there, that's the, um, must be the volume up and volume down, I think. 5 volts charge, is it? Must be at least a 3.7 volt battery. It would have to be. No electronics in there, I don't think. One of the green bit is usually a little, oh, there is two little PCB in there. Be battery protective, um, protected battery protection circuitry. Hmm. I don't have any real use for this thing anyway, so. No real use for that, I might as well pop it. There's our microphone. Without a little, uh, the guide there, made of rubber. Tiny little microphone. There's our speaker. Quartz crystal. Must be the synchronizer frequency or something. There's a little chip under here, it's got link or something written on it. 24COB slash T1, and it's got 1386 or something like that under it. It's hard to read. It's a little tiny chip here. Let's see if I can zoom into it. I need a good lens for this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I need a lens like um, David Jones from EAV blog uses. Get much better um, the picture of what we're looking at. Interesting. All right. I might have probed this battery. See how much power is left inside it. Um, it wasn't powered, that's I'm assuming it's flat. Oh, 3.8 volts. 3.8 volts still stored in that battery. Interesting. So the charging circuit is in that little green bit there. You can feel the stiff part. There's a printed circuit board in there. Battery maintenance, uh, management, everything is all done in there. So do a careful open up of that. Very careful of lithium uh, batteries. I think it'd be quite dangerous. That's destroying it. No, no circuit board in there. Just the two taps going into the battery. There you go. 
maybe it's internal. Definitely a nice circuit board. Part of the battery protection must be. So this little chip here or something must be part of it. This must be part of the um, lithium battery management there. It would have to be, because um, it's got a lithium battery like this and it's got to be some sort of charging circuit. You couldn't rely on the uh, USB device to do that. There we are. Not much to it. I don't know how they can small they can make but, uh, things in this new technology. Saying that's still a bit of charging this battery, see if I can get this in to turn on. Yep, it's on. It works. Cool. Buttons. There you go. Now it's off. Interesting, it still works. Okay, video was that to be enough for now? Oh, here's a date code. 2012 it was made by a van tour. Model is Trexus. Obviously, um, RHS crap. Made in China. There you go. I was using this uh, FR sort of time switch. I was noticing it wasn't turning back on. I thought, oh no, the bloody motor burnt out. But I got it all opened up. You undo these little terminal screws to the motor, and two, there's a switch contacts, and these three, and it comes out of its case quite easily. Now, after um, putting the multimeter probes, here's a mechanism here. I probe the um, motor windings directly, and the motor's fine, so. But behind here, you've got this little contact. That disc pops back across two contacts, it goes to these. And on close inspection, those contacts have got crud built up on them. It's actually a bad connection. I'm not getting any reading across this switch, so it's uh, quite a bad connection in there. I get 240 volts uh, in through here and nothing comes back, so that's a pretty dirty connection in there. Very interesting though, it's like a little um, I'm not quite sure how that works, but it pops out like that when it's uh, finished winding. You can see there, it goes one way, a little uh, ratchet mechanism in there. I've got very careful of this, it's very well made, this switch. There's a little swing in there which uh, makes it go one way. I turn that, and it turns very easily. So it doesn't really need any oil in it. This is the main concern here, why it wasn't working, so I'll give this a bit of a clean. Polish those contacts, put some contact cleaner in there, and this thing should work again. It's uh, very accurate, it doesn't lose track of time either. So I'll get that switch, uh, switch contacts clean and this will be working again. Okay, if you want to just give those contacts a bit of a clean, the disc inside I showed that goes, that pops down. Let's fucking zoom into it here. Um, This little uh, disc inside there, you can actually rotate it and get it and get a new uh, start, another clean surface. That actually rotates. You can turn it and get to a new bit of surface. Just readjust the multimeter here. Just flick it on. Yeah, I got a reading off it. That's off. Back on. There you go. It's gone open again. Uh, there you go, it's working now. It's just a bit of an intermittent connection. There you go, bloody zoom. That's off. Back on. Yeah, a bit dirty. The contacts are slightly uh, burnt, so... Been switching on and off a lot, a lot of times, this uh, switch, and it's lifetime. Just keep playing with it till it stops uh, being intermittent. There you go, I've bumped the leads. Seems to work now. Yep, there you go. Beautiful. There you go, so that's fixed. I'll put this thing back together and give it a run. Bit of 
right in there, I could probably give it a bit of a clean actually, a bit of bits of dirt stuck to the um, chassis where the grease is uh, gummed up, there's actually dirt stuck to it, so I might as well give that a bit of a brush over, get, get all that crap off, don't want that getting in the mechanism. There we are, it works, that's all it was, a bad connection. The yeah, first two times I powered on, it worked. But the third time I meant to plug it in and test it, it stopped, so it's winding the spring up. That's quite well. Yeah, got plenty of warning to do. There we are. See that switch just popped. Cool, it works. Oh, I'm yours. Power off. Unplug safety first. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.